In this movie, we're going to look still further into the relationship between solving a system of equations and matrix inverses. And we're also going to understand why the method that we've learned for finding the inverse of a matrix actually works. This shows four systems of equations which are identical to the left of the equals marks. Notice that all the coefficients for the x, y, and z terms are the same in the, four, in the four systems. What's different is the numbers to the right of the equal marks. Another way of saying it would be to say that all four systems have the same coefficient matrix. They obviously don't have the same augmented matrix, but they do have the same coefficient matrix since the coefficients of the x, y, and z terms are the same in every system. Now, think about a way that you could actually solve all the systems at the same time. If you were just solving the first system of equations, you would start out with the augmented matrix, which consisted of this left part, which is the coefficients, plus this first column. If you were doing the second system right here, you would use this column of numbers. Or for the system at the upper right, you would use this column. The system at the lower right, you would use this column. You can put all four columns on the right and solve all four systems at the same time. And the reason that you can do that is because the row operations that you choose, remember, don't have anything to do with what's on the right. The row operations that you're choosing are totally determined by the action that's going on over here, which was the same for all the systems. So that means you could solve the system separately using the same sequence of row operations, or you can combine it all and solve them all at once uh, with just one pass through. If you actually were to do that, if you were to start with this and do the row operations to solve the system, you would wind up with this on the left and all of this on the right, which you can then interpret as the solution for the four systems of equations. These numbers being the x, y, and z values for the, for the first system, the second, the third, and the fourth. Now let's carry on a bit further. Look at this system in particular. Remember we saw a few movies back that this system of equations carries exactly the same information as this single matrix equation. And the reason, remember, is if you actually do the multiplying here, you have 2 times x plus 1 times y plus 0 times z equals the 1 here, which is this first equation. And similarly, you multiply the second row out, and you get the second equation, and so forth. So this system of equations has the same information in it as that matrix equation. In this matrix equation, we're looking at the coefficient matrix for the system, and let's temporarily use these letters to represent the entries in the inverse matrix for that coefficient matrix. So here's the coefficient matrix for the system, and let's use these letters to represent the numbers that would be in the inverse matrix for this guy. Let's think about what we did once before, which is multiplying by that inverse matrix in this matrix equation. So we're taking this matrix equation and multiplying both sides on the left by that inverse matrix. Since we're assuming that this is the inverse of this, it means when we multiply the inverse times this matrix, these two, the product, will be the identity matrix which multiplied times the column XYZ just gives us XYZ. So this whole left side is going to collapse into just the column XYZ. That will be equal to this product on the right, which if we multiply it out is A times 1 plus B times 0, C times 0. It's just A up here. This row times this column gives us the D, and this row times this column gives us the G. So the point is, the solution that we get for that system of equations, the x, y, z value, are given by the numbers a, d, and g in the inverse matrix. This is just a restatement of what I just said. If we solve this system of equations, we find that the solution 
for x, y, and z is equal to the numbers a, d, and g, which is the first column of the inverse of the coefficient matrix. If you look at this system, where instead of 1, 0, 0, we have 0, 1, 0, then what you find out is that the solution for the system is the numbers in the second column of the inverse matrix. And you go on and do it for this system, where the 1 is in the last spot, and you find that the solution for x, y, and z for that system is the numbers in the third column of the coefficient matrix. So when you put that all together, what it tells us is that if we started with this, which would be equivalent to solving all three systems at the same time, what we would get would be, in the one case, the numbers in the first column of the inverse, in the second case, the second column of the inverse, and in the third case, the third column of the inverse. And then remember, that's exactly a verification of the method that we used to find the inverse, was to do the row operations, and then the inverse matrix appears right here. So we're seeing that the way we were doing that is completely consistent with what we're now observing about solving multiple systems of equations all at the same time.